Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name's Nicole. If you're new here, I post content on motherhood every Tuesdays and Thursdays and every other Sunday. I would love to have you as a viewer here, so don't forget to click subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about 10 of my little boy Didier's favourite books. My little boy Didier is two and of course he can't get enough of story time. He can't get enough of his books. He absolutely loves them. When it comes to night time, we try and get him to bed. My limit is three stories every night because otherwise he'd be there all night. And I just wanted to share 10 of his favourite books. I actually love watching these because it just lets you see what other toddlers are into and what other books are out there. I've tried to pick some that aren't very well known. There are some in there that are by quite famous authors and ones that even I had when I was a kid. And even though my little boy does love you know classics such as The Gruffalo and Tiger Came to Tea, I'm not going to involve those because they are a little bit too obvious. I'm just going to try and scale back just to books that I've maybe never come across before and I just want them to share them because that's why I love watching these so you can you know you can see what other books are out there because there are some great books out there and not all of us know about them. So I'll stop rambling and get straight into it. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab them from my pile. Uh, my little boy actually loves this book. I think my mum got this one in a charity shop. Most of his book collection comes from there. And then the newer ones, we usually ask for birthdays and Christmas. But uh, yeah, this one came from a charity shop and it's called Chimpanzees in Dungarees, Colour and Counting Book by Rosie Webb. And she does an absolutely stunning illustrations, as you can tell. So this is such a lovely little book. My little boy is really into counting at the moment and of course he loves animals. So this is a really sweet one. They all kind of rhyme, so it's like one giraffe in a purple scarf. And it goes all the way through counting the animals and they're all wearing an accessory and we particularly love this one seven cocks in yellow crocs and the chickens like the cockerels are wearing crocs my night was made when i read that book but it's such a sweet little book we are trying to make sure that my little boy grows up to be bilingual my husband is french so we like to read this to him in French and English. I'm not fluent, but I do know quite a bit of basic French. So of course, numbers, animals. So I will like read it to him in English and then I will get him to say it in French. So he'll go like, you know, Sanko, Flamingo. And we talk about, you know, the outfits that they're wearing, like what, you know, like up here, they've got hats on. So we say, you know, chapeau for hat. So it's been like a good little learning book for him. And I just think it's such a nice little book, especially, you know, I love, illustrations like this and it's just a really lovely vibrant book and yeah it's definitely a favorite of my little boys at the moment next up is a classic i know i said i wasn't going to involve too many classics but i can't not raise my child without Harry mccleary because this is one of my favorite books as a kid so this is Harry mccleary's catawall paper by linley dodd this is just one of my favorite books as a child uh, it all starts off uh, again this is from a charity shop so it has got some uh, crayon or neon highlighter on there but uh yeah it's such a funny little book if you've not read any of these there's quite a few in the series i personally love this one and the original and because uh, you know all the cats and dogs have really funny names and they used to make me laugh when i was a child and this one is all about a cat called named scarface claw who gets stuck in the tree and uh all the dogs come to bark at him underneath the tree and uh, this is Harry McCleary, the main character. If you're not familiar with him or her, I just absolutely, I'm so glad that, you know, I'm actually reading this to my son. But uh, I love all the dogs. Like they all have their own little characters and like characteristics and traits. Like, look at him. The illustrations in this have always made me laugh. And in the original, it says Schnitzel von Crumb with a very low tum. And of course my like five year old self say schnitzel von chrome with a very low bun you know followed by hysterics thinking that was the funniest thing in the world so i'm now teaching that to my two-year-old of course i am yeah it's such a funny book as i mentioned the dogs are great the 
names are great. You just can't go wrong with Hayley McLeary. So if you see any of these, I would highly recommend you picking these up. Next is, again, is another book that my mum picked up in the charity shop. Um, this was called Cotton Wool Colin by Jean Williams and Tony Ross. I have never come across this book before, but I do know the illustrator Tony Ross. He illustrates the Little Princess series, which I grew up with as a kid. And I think that's why my mum picked these up because she knew that I liked the illustrator. And this one's just quite funny because it's all about a little mouse and he's quite small and his mum is really worried about him. So she wraps him up in cotton wool and she thinks it's going to save him, but he accidentally gets out of the house one day and everything that could go wrong happens to him, but he's protected uh, in his little cotton wool ball. But again, it's some lovely colours and I do love Tony Ross. These are the kind of books that I feel like you just, that just don't get any limelight. You know, they're quite sweet little books and nobody kind of mentions them. So yeah. That's one of my little boy's favourites. Next up I have this one, again a charity shop find. This one is called My Shadow by Robert Louis Stevenson, which I'm a bit confused about because didn't he write Treasure Island? Uh, it is illustrated by Sarah Sanchez. And yeah, it's a really, really sweet little book. My little boy at the moment is currently obsessed with his shadow. Whenever we see it outside or we're about to get into bed, he'll see it and he's like, oh, Diddy's shadow. And he loves to point him out and we always make a point to say, oh, hello, shadow, how are you today? We have a little conversation. Now I talk about that out loud, it sounds a bit weird. We talk to our shadows a lot. But yeah, so this book um, kind of fueled that. He loves this one, he actually requests this one quite often. It's a lovely little book, lovely like cartoon illustrations again. And um, like I said, it's kind of in poem form. So it's not kind of rhyming, but it's like, I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. And what can be the use of him is more than I can see. Oh, so it is rhyming. <laughs> okay, it's a very lovely little book and it just shows you, you know, obviously the little boy and the adventures he has telling you all about his shadow. But this is the kind of thing where my little boy gets excited because of course he sees his shadow when we're about to get into his bed and he's like, oh, did he shadow? And we'd be reading this story and he's looking behind him like, is my shadow. So it's quite a fun little book if you're trying to explain shadows to your little ones. Another one, I think the majority of these are from charity shops, but uh, this one is called The Night Pirates and this is a great little book. Something that I would have loved as a kid, I think that's probably why my mum picked it up. And it's by Peter Harris and Deborah Allwright. I love the illustrations in this and my little boy is obsessed with pirates. I used to adore anything to do with pirates when I was a kid. And I love books that have a kind of twist to them. So this one's really sweet. I love like different illustrations. So all the houses here are all like a collage. If you've read the books by like Lola and Charlie, you'll know what I mean. It's like that kind of collage thing going on, like illustration. And you know, it's like, it starts off down, down, down the dark, dark street they came. Quiet as mice, stealthy as shadows. Up, 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 the dark, dark house they climb. Stealthy as shadows, quiet as mice. It's just a really fun little book and it's all about a little boy whose house gets stolen by girl pirates. And he asks if he can join and they say yes. So that was quite a nice surprise when I was reading this for the first time that it turns out to be girl pirates because Growing up, I didn't read that many stories about girl pirates, so that was quite nice to see. And they're very kind, and they let him uh, come along with them, but they're using his house to, you know, use a sort of decoy to steal the big pirate's treasure. So yeah, we really enjoy pirate stories, and my little boy adores this one. Now this one is perhaps one of my little boy's most requested nighttime stories. As I mentioned earlier, my husband is French and we are trying to get my little boy to be bilingual. So my husband purchased quite a few French books on Amazon and this one came along and it's not uh, all French. It's the majority of the books that he bought were all French wording. And this one is more a story about a little dog called Monsieur Roscoe, who's going on holiday. And in the speech bubbles, it says, you know, bonjour, hello, and it has the translation under all of them. And this story is by Jim Field, and it says there, I thought I recognised there was something familiar about this story. And it's by the author and illustrator of the Oi Frog books. 
which are really funny. The kids at my work absolutely love those. I haven't actually got any of those books. I'll have to pick those up for my little boy, he learner. But yes, it's all about this character, Monsieur Roscoe, and he's going on holiday. He goes camping, he goes to the Alps, he goes to like the Riviera, and it's such a lovely book. As you can see, it has some absolutely beautiful illustrations. I loved a busy page as a kid, looking into like the windows, see what's going on, and again, that sounds really wrong. But yeah, it's kind of like a Where's Wally book, and I used to love those. They're, they're quite small, like, paragraphs on the page, and my little boy will just be eyes wide, staring at the page, looking at everything that's going on. So it says here, like, un moto, motorbike, and we'll ask him then in French, you know, where's the motorbike? Quelque le moto, and we ask him to, yeah, find the items on the page, which is quite fun, and it really gets him thinking. So this is a really sweet book. He is currently absolutely obsessed with this book. If there's anything we do in a day-to-day -day routine, and it's something that happens in this book, he will now say, oh, like Monsieur Roscoe. It doesn't come out as clear as that. It's like, oh, Monsieur Rollo. <laughs> and in the beginning, he packs his suitcase. So of course it goes through all of his clothes, like items in French. So this is really handy, obviously, when we're dressing Didier, and we'll go through all the clothes. And his new favourite one is pantalon, which is trousers. And whenever we say to Diz, you know, come on, you need to put your trousers on. He's like, oh, pantalon, like Monsieur Roscoe. So it has definitely improved his French, definitely added something extra to his vocabulary. And he has definitely fallen in love with this Monsieur Roscoe character. So highly, highly recommend this one if you are trying to introduce another language or if you are French or bilingual French. This is a lovely addition, and like I said, this is probably the most read story. Out of the three stories I read every night, this is one of them. <laughs> Next up is another charity shop find. This story here, this is called The Creepy Crawly Calypso, written by Tony Langham and illustrated by Debbie Harter. And I particularly love these books because they are an audio story, like sing-along CD. These are just great, just for sitting down and listening to. The kids love the music, they love the illustrations. This one is obviously all about creepy crawlies. And again, my little boy loves this one. He loves the illustrations and he is really into his numbers at the moment. So he loves talking about uh, the insects. So of course we talk about them in French. So he's like, oh, papillon, deux papillon. Uh, I don't know what cockroaches is in French, but uh, oh, dragonflies, you're like, oh, cat libellul. So any kind of counting book is great, but I do particularly love these like sing-along ones. I bought a load for my work and I bought them all off Amazon and they're really cheap. They're about five to six pound, but we don't have a CD player anymore. So I had a little look on YouTube and they are by a company called Barefoot Books. And if you type that onto YouTube, they've got their own YouTube channel and they have uploaded nearly, I think, every one that they've ever done. And it is fantastic. Sometimes we'll put that on, you know, if I'm cooking tea at night uh, and I need like quite five minutes, <laughs> I put him in front of that and he actually loves the singing. This song's about pirates, mermaids, you know, like there's a happy and you know it one going all around the world. There's the one about like a dragon in the toy box or the doorstep. And they are such lovely songs and I can guarantee that if you've got a little one, they will love to sit and watch or you know, listen to these. I highly recommend these books. Next up, I have The Very Helpful Hedgehog by Rosie Wellesley. And this is such a lovely book. Uh, again, another charity shop find. It's all about a lonely little hedgehog. You know, he has no friends. All he wants to do is an app. <laughs> and an apple falls on him. And of course it sticks with spikes and he can't get it off and uh, the illustrations in this are so beautiful it's kind of one of those watercolor kind of things where it really makes me want to pick up a paintbrush even though i can't draw or anything but uh, eventually he comes across a paddock and um, a donkey comes along and eats it off him and he makes friends with the donkey but it's just such a sweet little story all about you know making friends and you know the little hedgehog gets upset because he can't get the apple off his back and it's quite good for, you know, teaching emotions as well. You know, he'll pick up on that and he'll be like, oh no, he's sad. And he's like, don't be sad, don't cry. So it's it's good to just, you know, teach him about those kind of emotions and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's mostly to do with friendship and sharing. So we talk about that when we read it. And again, the illustrations are gorgeous. He loves hedgehogs now after reading this story. Next up, I have Tyrannosaurus Drip. 
and this is by Julia Donaldson and David Roberts and I love this book I absolutely love this one this one makes me like smile every time I read it I think it was only like a couple of times after reading it that I did realize it was by Julia Donaldson this story is all about a little herbivore dinosaur and his egg gets stolen out of the nest and he gets dropped off into the t-rex nest and it's just a book on all about being different and him realizing that he's not like his family obviously he's being raised by t-rex and they think he's a bit of a wimp because he's not eating meat, he wants to eat the water reeds, but it's all full of rhymes and it's really quite sweet, like I love, love the illustrations. I loved it because it's got a little rhyme and the uh, T-Rexes, you know, they shout up with hunting, up with war, up with bellyfuls of duckbill dinosaur and I just, I really love him. So this is such a funny little story, it's got a good little ending and of course you just can't go wrong with a Julia Donaldson book, can you? But yeah. I do love this one and so does my little boy. I promise these are all for him, not for me. <laughs> and last but not least, I have Dogger. Uh, I'm including this one because I grew up this one. This is one of my most favourite childhood stories. And I will be completely honest, it is a little bit too long, so my little boy, he doesn't sit still through the whole story, but he does love to sit and read it and he understands the concept of it. And it's by the author and illustrator Shirley Hughes, and it's just so reminiscent of my childhood because I adored this story. I really related to this when I was a kid. Um, but again, beautiful illustrations, and it's all about this little dog called Dogger. He is the soft toy of a little boy called Dave. You know, this little dog goes absolutely everywhere with him, and one day when he goes out, he drops it and he can't find his beloved dogger anyway. And when he goes to the school fate, he realizes that his little dog is on the school table ready for someone to buy and he doesn't have enough money to buy his dog back. And when he finally finds his sister to come get the money, uh, someone else has already bought him. And I won't lie, it's emotional. It's full of ups and downs, but he does get reunited. Spoiler for you there, but it is such a beautiful book. I grew up with it, it will always be one of my treasured stories. So he kind of understands the concept when he reads this. He's like, oh no, dog has gone. So it is a very, very sweet story and I love reading it to him. Hello, Bubba, you gonna come sit with Mama? Oh, Num Num. You got a big Num Num, why have got a Num Num? Got my little boy joining me to sign off. There are all 10 of my little boy's favorite books. We love to sit and read these at night time, don't we? Thank you so much for watching. I would really love it if you give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below all of your favourite stories for your little ones. And I will see you in the next one.